splashing as shallows, kind of swim, whatever it is. This video will be Lagoon Boat Cruise. Shut up! Down here in the window. Window city. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, Oh, no, no, no. Wait, 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 First up, these screens above your head. Please don't open them up to stick your camera, your GoPro, or a handout for some reason, because these crocodiles are still getting the condition to jump up to anything because they're either side of the boat. We haven't seen you get the hottest fruit before. Saying that unlikely to see that today, but potential is always there. I'm going to also drop this magical crocodile proof rope for your safety. Let me down there, you'll be fine. Okay? <laughs> Just in case the crocodile lands in front with me, they've all been trained. I will not come and need that rope. I'm <laughs> feeling safe. Yeah. <laughs> now, on the off chance I get dragged in by a crocodile while I'm feeding them, I need one to calmly come up past that rope, grab this radar which will be on the dashboard here, press that black button outside and call for help. Okay, if that fails, there is another radio underneath the steering wheel there, underneath the tub working container. That one fails as well, you're not too sure how to work a radio, the easier option is an airborne. And there's a fire extinguisher bumps on top of it, just hold that down. That just lets some people at the front desk know the driver's got an overboard again. And then you can have the drive around to finish up your tour. Okay, so let's go. Open your eyes, eh? Open your eyes. Look, look. This one, this one, right? Oh, she's a crocodile. You know? You know what's the name? Okay, folks, this little girl, this old man made. This one about five acres of land. And the loop we're about to do. About 1.2 long. Originally, this is all paddocks for horses, cows. They have a few dams on it here and there, but it did take them approximately eight years to complete this lagoon. That included excavation, I'd dig it up all the old clay soil, putting down the right type of soil for this environment, put up retaining walls, fences, and by the end of it, they planted something like 5,000. New trees, plants, etc. Look like how it looks today. The look they've gone for is a metal look of wetland, which is pretty similar to what you're going to see further north. They have a jungle about like up Cape York, down to the Gulf, and in the Northern Territories. Excellent crocodile country. Everyone's scared. Yeah. Turn. Yeah, metal look trees have a few different names like the weeping yeah. tea tree, paper bark tree. Oh, I that These trees can cope with the woodlock soils, <laughs> like in swamps, lagoons like this one. Does dry out. Yeah, they adapt to that, surviving that dry soil as well. If you look at the root system of these dry looking trees, that 
a bit of a barrier for erosion. It also helps avoid with filtration. So, so we've got 30 saltwater crocodiles in this lagoon. There's nine males and 21 females. Now all the females are actually captive hatch and raised because we do have that farm. All these girls are hatched on the farm stayed in until they got big enough to release them here safely. And all the males on the other hand, they've been caught from the wild. So they've been out around the region. Doing the wrong thing, could have been hanging around boat ramps, jetties, from past beaches. So they a problem. If you remove the public safety, and safety for adults, so we're taking them in. And trying to find their natural habitat. Now, if you think of that name saltwater crocodile, it is a very misleading name. This lagoon, it's all fresh water. And now the wild is estimated roughly at 70% to buy population saltwater crocodiles will never enter salt water. They're quite happy living in our fresh water systems and many of them do. As long as they get a constant food source, they're not pushed out by bigger males, they'll be quite happy to stay there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that one's great food. 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 So, I'm going to be feeding on both sides of both of you can see. And the opposite side where I feed from, feel free to stand up and have a look. Be curious about the people around and please don't be rushing to the one side. Get some food out. It's moving. Hello, great man. Hello, my team. Hello, you know, 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 you at least one very hypersensitive pressure receptor. If you look at the jawline in case you see above the waterline, you're going to see black dots that come at the bottom and top jaws. The pressure receptors around the area. As I said, all over the body, how good they work. If something came down for a drink, splash around in the shallows, have a swim, whatever it is. And it's a crocodile in the area, they'll pick up on that. Maybe go and investigate. That's great, mate. That's you and the eyes of the crocodile when they're in the water. The eyes go clean to color. It's actually a third eyelid. So I'm looking at that membrane. That comes from the front of the eye to the back of your eye. And some people say it's like goggles for them. But it really doesn't enhance the vision. It just stops like the dirt, sand, grit coming out of that crocodile's eyes. That popping sandwich you see when it's biting at the food, that's what we call a jaw slap, a jaw pop. And on a good day, you can hear that on the other side of the park, so my gun going off. So all this is the air being forced out of the jaws. Similar when we clap our hands, that air displacement doesn't hurt them. There's another one. But they have been recorded as one of the hardest spawned animals to face this planet. And we're talking about the big fellas, around about four to five meters. You have it here, four to five meters? Yeah, we've got a four point seven one in here. 
A male. Yeah, a male. Now they are a polyphyton animal, which means they replace their teeth every 18 months to two years. They go through a full set of teeth one at a time. And one or two of those teeth get knocked out in a fight or something, it starts to happen. Those teeth would just regenerate a little bit quicker than normal. Happy. He's going to chase that small one away. It just shows you the dominance they have, especially the big ones, they'll chase the small ones away. Uh, the deepest point is around the other side, yeah. it's about yeah. three and a half metres. Yeah. It probably looks like a tease in these crocodiles. I pretty much am really. We're saying that with these crocodiles in here, they get too much food. And they don't get the exercise the wild bones do. <laughs> so we've got it moving about, jumping about, food enrichment for it. We like to call this crocker size. <laughs> so give a bit, bit of an example of how much they eat. This fellow in front of us now. If we feed him a whole chicken a week, that is plenty of food for him to survive on. We've known them to go over 12 months without food as well. But they can go long periods without food. Oh, i get one or two more jumps and we've got to keep moving around. How much would that crocodile weigh? Probably about 200 kilos. All oh, right. That's all work on They do have a few different names they go by. Like the Indo Pacific crocodile probably suits them more better. They just describes where they, in the world they are found. Through Northern Australia, up to PNG, Indonesia, Philippines, across the southern tip of India. Also known as an estuarine crocodile. Got numerous nicknames. Everyone just knows him as a saltwater crocodile. Oh, there's a one. Wait, right there. there. Up. No, in the land, no? Up. There. Oh. You see that on right there? Great. There. Oh. Those are kiwi fruits. Now, folks, if you're looking for somewhere to stay tonight, we do offer free camping area. Take <laughs> <laughs> me on the right hand side. Pretty much then. 
Now there's a very good example of a coronal nest on our right hand side. Right, it's a couple of metres from that water line behind some trees. Mm -hmm. Right hand side, that little wallow there. Yep. Yeah, so you pick them out of the dirt, leaf litter, vegetation, that's a mm. crocodile nest. It looks a bit like a compost heap. It does work like a compost heap, slowly decomposes, creating that warmth, keep those eggs lively. See one. See one. Now, we have been through the breeding season already this year, which is September, October. And now we're in the nesting period, which is anywhere November through to March. The whole process is kicked off with the environmental cues the crocodiles get. Like when the days get longer, humidity rises, temperature rises, all factors. When that female is ready to lay her eggs or scratch up a nest, similar to what we've seen, could be smaller, can also be bigger, take about a week to make. But on average, we get 40 to 60 eggs out of one female. Then she'll sit there and guard that nest for the next three months. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I hope you like the tour. Like and subscribe. <laughs>